Hey everyone, welcome into the Fancy Pros Football Podcast. I'm Bobby Sylvester, joined as always by Mike Teglier, and we're on Twitter at Bobby Fantasy Pro and at Mike Teglier NFL. We're also on Instagram at those same handles. Tags, how's it going, man? It's, it, I mean, it, my Thursday could be better, to be honest with you. I, um, I just got back home from the DMV, and uh, let me just say I spent way, 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 way too long there. And, uh, you know, those horror stories that you're hearing, they're there for a reason, man. I don't think I've, I've ho- heard all these horror stories about spending too much time at the DMV. I don't think I've ever been there more than like 10, 15 minutes. Hold on, Bobby. You, you live in a town with like 300 people. I'm not kidding. Well, I mean, it's not like we have a DMV. I got to drive 30 minutes to get to the closest DMV. <laughs> <laughs> But it's always, it's never that busy. Guys, we've got our Week 7 DFS show today. So we're going to be talking about FanDuel, DraftKings, uh, Cash Games is primarily, we'll touch on GPP as well, give our lock of the week at the end, our stack of the week at the end. And we're joined by one of the great minds in the industry. Now, we haven't had him on the podcast before, which is a real shame because he does great work. In fact, I didn't even follow him until a couple weeks ago until I got the, uh, the heads up from Tags that he was a really good follow. And you know what happened the very next week? Out of 150 experts, I finished in the top five for accuracy. Ian, I give you all the credit. It's <laughs> Ian, how do you pronounce your last name? I'm sorry. I should have asked you before the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. It's a tricky one. Uh, it's hard. It's like cheese. its So hard. It's. <laughs> I think I probably would have got it right, but I didn't want to say the wrong one. You know, now we're recording on video, so we don't really have as much room for flubs and everything like that. By the way, that's at YouTube.com slash Fantasy Pros. And he's on Twitter at I Hard It's. And uh, Ian, you're with Roto World now. Yes, sir, man. It's uh, it's been a fun season so far, although uh, pretty tilting Thursday myself because maybe the only thing more annoying than the DMV is construction. And we are like adding a new wing to our Stanford location. So I picked a pretty terrible day to forget my headphones. So I've been listening to a freaking nail gun and drilling all morning, <laughs> man. It's been awful, but I'm ready to talk some ball. <laughs> I mean, that sounds awful. We do have uh, some, you guys have problems in your life. I mean, I, I'm, I've got an ice cream milkshake right next to me. I guess that's my biggest problem is It's going to melt while I'm doing the show. I can't eat it because we're going to be on video. Otherwise, I'd like put myself on mute, like take a bite here and there. Um, But we do get to work in fantasy sports for a living. So I don't really have any complaints. No, stop it. Stop it. You, you and your, you and your pizzas and your shakes and your, your boyish figure. Tags, just do it, man. Just give up on the diet. And just eat what you want, man. You'll be a lot happier. I kid you not. I had some Doritos the other day, and I was like, "Why do I miss out on this more often?" Like, <laughs> uh, they're, they're so good. And uh, but at the same time, I want to fit in my clothes, so that's uh, important too. Or you can just wear a robe all the time. Ooh, ooh, there we go. That sounds good, Ian. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I was a big robe guy when I was working at home. Now I got to wear, you know, pants every day. It's, <laughs> it's real. real tough. Hey, by the way, I want to tell you about a tool that we have that's really going to help you out with DFS. It's called our DFS Optimizer. You can check it out at fantasypros.com slash optimizer, and it's going to save you hours of research, let you tweak your lineups as much as you want, like locking and excluding players to create your own custom player pool, and it uses projections that are constantly being updated, or you can import your own projections if you want. It supports FanDuel, DraftKings, Fantasy Draft, and Yahoo contests, and it can generate up to 150 lineups at a time with our multi-lineup generator. There's all kinds of other bells and whistles as well, so check it out at fantasypros.com slash optimizer. All right, guys, we'll start at the running back position. I mean, this is, if you miss on the running back position, it's going to be really hard to cash. Um, so we'll talk FanDuel and DraftKings uh, for the prices. Who are your favorite plays this week? I've got two of them that I think are just locks, and if you're not using these guys, I think you're in big trouble. Who do you see, Ian? Yeah, so, you know, no McCaffrey on this slate, which even things makes things a little bit easier. You don't have to worry about jamming him in. I don't know that Saquon will be super limited, but at 8,900, I mean, you're not giving yourself much room for error. The two guys I see just popping out that seem egregiously underpriced are carry on Johnson and Josh Jacobs. This is on DraftKings specifically, but carry on coming in at 5,100 and Jacobs at only 5K. I mean, these are two three down or running backs for the most part. Jacobs a little bit more game script dependent uh, than we'd hope for us with some of the pass down work, but these guys have been getting fed. I mean, you know, we, we were calling all off season, even last year, like free carry on Johnson. Well, he's been free guys. And it's been fantastic. Uh, three games since they got rid of CJ Anderson, he's had 77%, 70%, 73% snap rates, had at least 17 touches in all those games. I know the matchup isn't ideal against the Vikings, but they really are one of those defenses that are quite a bit better at home than on the road, uh, which helps them out a little bit. And I also just think their rush defense this year has been a little bit fluky. I mean, they were able to shut down the Falcons. They were able to shut down a hurt Josh Jacobs. 
Bears, Wayne Gallman, the Eagles. We saw the Packers run all over them, though, earlier in the season with Aaron Jones. And I do think there is room for carry on to eat in this spot. And then real quick with Josh Jacobs. I mean, like I said, he's a little bit game script dependent. And we've seen that uh, in the games where we've gotten behind a lot. But and there are three non blowouts this year. Josh Jacobs has 24, 19 and 29 touches. And again, the pass game work hasn't quite been there, but it's something they're working towards. I mean, Gruden has come out in the media and said they want to get Jacobs more involved as a receiver. Before their bye, we did see him get a season high 17 routes, three targets in week five. Still a little too much Jalen Richard and DeAndre Washington than any of us want to see. But, you know, in a matchup that I don't think, well, I don't think the Packers are necessarily going to blow the Raiders out of the water. 5,000, and we can guarantee, you know, not guarantee, but looking at a 20 ish touch production, sign me up. So I want to add something to Josh Jacobs. So in week two, we only saw 12 touches. He still went for 99 yards. In week three, he went for 10 touches. Let's keep in mind, I mean, this was a guy who was dealing with a stomach bug so bad that he lost 10 pounds during the season. So of course he wasn't as, uh, at, at his best, but when he's been playing, besides those two weeks, 23 for 85, he also had a reception for 28 yards, two scores, uh, 17 for 79 uh, two receptions for 29, 26 carries against the Bears for 123, three receptions, 20 yards, two touchdowns. He's been fantastic, Tags. I'm a little worried about game script here, and I, it's not to say that I think the Packers are going to blow them out. Uh, it's possible, though. Like that, like that, Even looking at the spread in that game, it's definitely possible that the Packers jump out to a two-score lead and they're forced to abandon the run. Kind of like if you look at on Johnson, just 13 carries against them last week. Before that, it was 12 carries to Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, that's my concern with Jacobs, and I know we've seen his, uh, his, his routes run trending up. I know we've seen his targets trending up. Looking at the losses they've had, that's when he really struggles, and that's my concern about this offense in, in general. There's going to abandon the past and they're going to be using a lot more of Jalen Richard and it's ugly man I, I it was so tough because when I was writing up this game I was like man I really do like Jacobs and I looked at his price and I was like man his prices they're like begging you to play him <laughs> but me personally I'm going to move up and I'm, I'm, I'm going to play Leonard Fournette in every lineup like there is no way that I can avoid Leonard Fournette today his his opportunity is right behind McCaffrey in terms of what he's getting in the passing game and on the ground D.D. Westbrook it seems like is probably I don't know if he's going to miss this week but it seems like he's like been downgraded so the Bengals are missing two starting cornerbacks. Like the Bengals are a mess altogether, but uh, I, I like Leonard Fournette a lot. If I'm going to go cheap, carry on is like, it's tempting, right? But it's a negative correlation with Dalvin Cook. And if I can pay for Dalvin Cook, I want to pay for him. So um, Bobby, what's your, what's your take on Dalvin Cook? Like for me, it's like him and Fournette are one A and one B this week. And I, I would argue that Dalvin Cook should probably be priced closer to Saquon Barkley this week. Yeah. So it's really interesting, right? Because First of all, I want to talk about Josh Jacobs and carry on Johnson on DraftKings. Josh Jacobs is the 24th most expensive running back on the main slate. Carry on Johnson, 22nd most. And our consensus projections have them at number 10 and number 11. So they're great values on DraftKings. Now over on FanDuel, I, I love that you brought them up for DraftKings, Ian. They make a ton of sense. Our model absolutely loves them. Over on FanDuel, they're 13th and 12th. So they're not great prices. I mean, they're decent plays. I want to touch carry on Johnson in cash games. Josh Jacobs. Maybe just because, you know, Green Bay hasn't been good against the run. He's been getting a lot of volume when he wasn't, you know, super sick or whatever. But Tags, I mentioned the two running backs that I love at the beginning of the show. I can't imagine going without, at least on FanDuel, it's Leonard Fournette on both sites. He's my number one. And then on, on FanDuel, it's, it's Dalvin Cook is my number two and not even close. Yeah, yeah. So, Ian, is there a reason that you're fading um, Dalvin Cook or Leonard Fournette? Or is it just more like you're just looking for the value of running back? No, I'm not. I mean, I have nothing bad to say about either of those guys. I mean, it seems like the only thing that slowed down Dalvin Cook this year is when they get up by multiple touchdowns and they just kind of let Madison run it out. I, I do think, I mean, this is this would be a good week. I mean, definitely give me a Fournette in the flex there. This Bengals defense hasn't been able to slow down anybody. And, you know, I'm happy you mentioned the hurt cornerbacks because William Jackson, and Drake Kirkpatrick, I think were like the only kind of redeeming qualities of that defense. <laughs> yeah. And now, now they're both gone. So of the whole team. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. We could like literally see this Bengals team, I think function as one of the worst in football, like the dolphins kind of in the near future. Yeah, man, it's that bad. But yeah. I'm, I'm just looking more at the value again. Uh, we were talking a little bit before the show, but I think it's a little bit tougher to go down at quarterback and tight end. So if I can save a little value, a running back and wide receiver, I'm going to there. Uh, real quick, one more guy that's uh, intriguing me on Fandle a little bit. And again, one of these cheaper dudes, but 
how is Matt Breida only at 5,600 when we got this Washington matchup that has all the makings of a smash spot? And I'm just, just looking at the pricing, like he's the cheapest guy, barring David Johnson being out, which doesn't really seem imminent. But as long as he's going, like Matt Breida, I think is the cheapest back you can get. Yes, he's in a committee, but he's in a two-back committee. We can live with that in fantasy. And it, that wasn't really confirmed until last week. But Jeff Wilson was active in week six, didn't have an offensive snap. Three of Raheem Mostert's four carries came on the final drive, and they're up 13. And Mostert's hurt now. Oh, yeah. I mean, great. <laughs> That's even better. <laughs> um, and then the other uh, other good thing to see was Breda had uh, four targets, and Coleman had three. And I was thinking this could happen when Kyle Juszczyk went out because, yes, not having you know one of the better fullbacks in the league isn't ideal for the rushing efficiency, but Shanahan uses Juszczyk so much in the passing game that when you take him out, now you got now we got more t- uh, targets for your two very competent three-down backs. So, yeah, man, we've, Breda, 11 carries, three targets week five, 13 carries, four targets in week six. He's got that workload. He's very good, and he's in a nice spot. So I find myself just going down these cheaper running backs because they are in good spots uh, compared to, you know, spending up a little bit. But, yeah, if if you can squeeze in Dalvin and Fournette, then I'm not going to argue with that either. Sure. I I think that's a really good call with Brita. I want to ask you about somebody else who's really cheap as well. In fact, over on DraftKings, he's the same price as Josh Jacobs and Kerryon Johnson. It's Joe Mixon. And you can look at Jacksonville's defense and say, man, This is an absolute bear, but they haven't been against the run this year. In fact, they've been a bottom quadrant run defense against the run. And uh, I mean, Joe Mixon, we haven't seen much from him because they've been playing from behind so much. I don't know if that happens this week. I think he gets 15, 20 touches. I mean, do we think that Jacksonville's not going to win that game? I mean, they're going to win the game. But if you give me 15, 20 touches against Jacksonville with Joe Mixon at $5,000, he's hidden value. But the thing is, he was, like I said last week, he was without three offensive linemen last week, and he lost a backup on the offensive line. Like, that, that team is in complete disarray, and the fact that they're not using Mixon in the passing game is stupid. I'm, I'm sorry. I try to be nice about things and tell like, things in like a nice way, but this is absolutely ridiculous that Joe Mixon's not being used in the pass game. It's like, let's draft a three-down running back and use him like he's Jordan freaking Howard. Uh, it, it's... It's it's upsetting. And not just that, but he's way better at catching the ball than he is at even running the ball. I would argue that that's also true. Yeah, like he reminds me, he's like a Le'Veon Bell type skill set, and they don't have the offensive line to be patient behind it. Uh, he could break more tackles than Le'Veon, I would actually say. Uh, but maybe not as good as a receiver, but he is a phenomenal receiver that's just not used. So that's why I can't use him. The thing he's not being used in the passing game, if that game does go south, he's basically, he's costing you. If you want to play him in tournaments, cool. Like, I'm fine with that. Uh, because he does get opportunity in, in, a, in a neutral game script, and he could break a long run. But uh, in cash, I, I, I think we hit on most of them, but I want to ask you guys' opinion. Like, why haven't we talked about Chris Carson at all? It Like, are you guys not considering Chris Carson at all this week? I think you always got to consider Chris Carson. I mean, even when – I know Penny didn't play last week, but he was back the week before, and it didn't change anything. As long as Carson is holding on to the ball, which – you know, knock on wood, last four weeks, he's been able to do that. He's been out there and he's been balling. I mean, dude's got one of the highest broken tackle rates in the league, which I know doesn't mean anything for fantasy, but it's just a good reflection that like this guy is truly really good. And yeah, at home versus Ravens defense that, you know, I don't want to call them frauds per se, but they definitely aren't (laughs) anywhere near like the kind of world beaters that we're used to. And it's a totally different roster than they had last year. They got rid of everybody on their defense and thought they'd just be the same. Absolutely, man. Like C.J. Mosley, you know, one kind of true difference making off ball linebackers you'll find in the league. Uh, that's obviously really impacted their front seven. And now we're taking away, you know, Tony Jefferson out of the secondary. Are you kidding? Marcus Peters is going to save them. No, he's not. <laughs> no, he's not. No, he's not. That's, that's a good one, Tags. Okay, so Chris Carson, I mean, this is this is a good call because, he, I mean, first of all, his ownership is going to be low because he's going up against Baltimore. But for me, what this is about, last three weeks, 22 for 104 on the ground, 4 for 41 through the air, and then he went 27 for 118, 24 for 124 last week. Every single week he's getting 20 plus, 100 plus, and he's being used as one of their top receivers. And now they don't have Disley, so it's like, unless we're going to start projecting Luke Wilson for a lot of targets, which, I mean, Luke Wilson's a fine sleeper play, honestly. I'm going to say that right now. Chris Carson should be involved in the passing game. Knowing they don't have Disley down there, we could see more care. Like, they don't really have a red zone guy. Like, DK Metcalf is a guy that can stretch the field, and he is a good contestant catch receiver, but he's not known for, like, jump balls. Tyler Lockett's not that guy. I just don't know if they have that guy on the roster, so they should pound it. Uh, I'm not saying that Baltimore is a great matchup because they have have been better against the run if you take away that one game against the Browns when they were uh they were without Brandon Williams in that game one of their defensive tackles he's like the run plugger uh so it's not to say that it's like a highly efficient matchup but getting Chris Carson at 6,500 and a guy that's going to see 20 plus touches that's just very rare to find in the NFL I'm not going to play him just because again I'm paying up for Leonard Fournette and probably Dalvin Cook but I, I do think he's a solid play 
Yeah, I was going to say real quick, one more guy um, that's 500 cheaper than Carson on both sites, Marlon Mack uh, coming in, and I think he's kind of in a similar position. He doesn't have the same pass game floor as Carson. Unfortunately, you know, we do see Naeem Hines uh, get in there when they're in comeback, hurry up mode. But that's really, we only really saw it the one week when they inexplicably, you know, fell down a couple scores to the Raiders. Otherwise, it's been the Marlon Mack show. And I mean, that was even week five where he's entering the game as like a true game time decision against the Chiefs winds up getting 32 touches and playing 67% snaps. The Colts like have the league's six most run heavy offense at this point. Their offensive line is a focal point of the team. Like they want to run the ball as much as possible. And my favorite thing about this is I just love the Colts defense on both sides. I think they're way too cheap for a well-coached defense that's getting uh, Darius Leonard back. So uh, the Marlon Mack Colts defense stack uh, is very intriguing to me, especially in GPPs. Love it. So guys, we named uh, five of my top six running backs. There's one other that hasn't been named yet. You know, it really depends on what happens with Alvin Kamara. If he doesn't play tags, do you like Latavius Murray against your Bears, who have had a mediocre run defense this year, and now they lose Akeem Hicks? No, because they priced him up. Like, you're paying, like, prices of someone like uh, Carrion Johnson, who's, uh, aren't they the identical prices? Like, that's... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I suppose that's the case over on DraftKings. On FanDuel, he's 5,300. Yeah, I'd play him on FanDuel. I, I, I don't think Latavius Murray's a bad play this week, but for whatever reason, like, as soon as that news dropped on Kamara, because, like, even before that news dropped, I was like, Latavius Murray should be owned. We talked about it on the waiver sh- wire show, and Kamara's not only dealing with a high ankle sprain, but Sean Payton said that there's a knee injury in there as well. He's not playing this week. Like, so the, the first thing I I did was go and look at see what Latavius Murray was priced at on DK and uh 5100 I was like what the hell is this <laughs> right we cannot have nice things that's the rule here it does seem like if even if Kamara manages to play which I I agree he's looking on the doubtful side of things but I mean he did not look 100% last week Kamara and David Johnson did not look 100% last week so I do expect to see uh Murray and to a little bit lesser of an extent Edmonds uh pretty involved either way any other running backs you guys want to talk about? There is one more, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save him for tournaments, though. I'm not going to talk about him in cash because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about you, Ian? Anyone else that you would even consider as a decent play for cash games? Not that you're playing, but you want it. I think I'm pretty good on cash. Everyone that we've mentioned for cash games, those are the guys that, you know, if you play them, it's, it's not really laughable. Um, I'm going to recap the top five that we all agreed on. Not in any order. Leonard Fournette, Dalvin Cook, Josh Jacobs, Carrion Johnson, Chris Carson. Any objection, guys? Sounds good to me. All right, guys, before we jump on over and talk about wide receivers, I wanted to tell you about one of the sponsors of today's show, FanDuel. This season, there are more ways to win than ever because FanDuel has more ways to win cash prizes and once-in-a-lifetime experiences during every single game, every single week. If you've never played FanDuel Fantasy Football before, that's great because new users are going to get $20 in site credit if they deposit $20. So, you know, we just talked about Leonard Fournette and Dalvin Cook as great plays. We're about to get in some wide receivers we absolutely love too. And the thing is, I love daily fantasy sports because in season-long leagues, like, your whole season can be ruined if Saquon Barkley goes out for the year and you drafted him first overall. If that happens in daily fantasy, so what? You lose one week, you build a brand new lineup next week. Plus, it's more flexible. If somebody drafts the guy you want in season-long leagues, you can't get him. You can draft whoever you want in daily fantasy as long as you can fit it under your budget. Plus, there's a chance to win millions of dollars. You can sign up for FanDuel right now and get $20 in total bonuses. Just make your first deposit to get started, and you'll get an extra $5 in site credit every week for four weeks. Go to FanDuel.com slash Fantasy Pros or download the FanDuel app now. And by the way, if you are a new user at FanDuel, it's perfect timing because we've got an offer going on right now at FantasyPros.com slash offers, where if you're a first-time depositor, all you need to do, submit 10 bucks to FanDuel, and you're going to get our Hall of Fame premium package for six months. That's a $65 value, and again, it's only 10 bucks, and you can win money with that 10 bucks, so it's basically free. Again, that's FantasyPros.com slash offers for six months of unlimited access to all our premium offerings. Tags, we're going to let you start here at the wide receiver position. Who stands out to you this week? T.Y. Hilton. I mean, at that price on DraftKings, 5900 Heck yeah. Yeah, like, I I mean, I ranked him inside my top, I think, eight wide receivers this week. So it's like you see a top eight wide receiver that is going to be involved in a game that people are projecting like for a big shootout. That's the number one option. Paris Campbell's dealing with an injury, apparently. Eric Ebron's not good. Um, like, somehow Jacoby Brissett keeps putting up numbers, and I, I, I'm, like, astounded every single week that I see it. But T.Y. Hilton, um, he's just – he's too cheap not to play as the number one option in that game against Houston. And, by the way, Houston, they might be without – two starting cornerbacks because Jonathan Joseph's dealing with an injury, a hamstring. Bradley Roby's dealing with a, a hamstring and their other starting cornerback is Lonnie Johnson, who's a rookie, who's not very good. So it's like everything adds up here and it's like T.Y. Hilton has absolutely crushed uh, the defense in Houston. Like 
I think over the last like th- four times they played, he's topped 120 yards like three times. Wow. Yeah. And it's a pass funnel defense as well. So they're going to have to pass the ball. And, you know, they've been moving Jacoby Brissett's passing attempts up. He went from like 27 to 28 to 35 to 45. Um, I, I think they're, they're going to throw plenty. Obviously, Hilton's going to be involved in that. You're right. On DraftKings, I would say T.Y. Hilton is my number one wide receiver option. Who do you like, Ian? Yeah, I love Hilton. I was getting some crap on Twitter for posting his like career game logs against the Texans. And like that's not all this is based on. It's based on the injured cornerbacks, too. And also, like Houston really hasn't changed their secondary that much in the past decade. So in this rare instance, like it actually kind of does make sense to look at the uh, past production. But but so uh, no, the guy I love, maybe my favorite play the entire week, Tyler Boyd, guys, he is too cheap, especially I mean, both sites, really. But, yeah, I think he's the same price on both sites, actually, somehow. He, he's my favorite play on FanDuel this week. It's wild, man. Look, the Jaguars really haven't faced a high-usage slot wide receiver like Boyd yet, so we haven't seen that specifically. But they have been roasted by number one receivers. I mean, per football outsiders, they have allowed a league-high 97 yards to num- opposing number one wide receivers. Uh, you know, we haven't been afraid of this Jaguars defense with when they haven't had Jalen Ramsey. And now we know for sure Ramsey's gone. AJ Boye did a pretty good job with Michael Thomas last week, but he doesn't play in the slot. I, I don't have, you know, D, DJ Hayden's not trash or anything, but at this point we got, when there's this much volume, we don't need to worry about matchups. Boyd joins Michael Thomas and Cooper Cup as the only guys with at least 60 targets this season. I mean, it's the perfect mix of a guy. He got a season low salary and a great matchup with a ton of volume. So I, I see no holes with the Tyler Boyd play. Mm-hmm. So it's really funny. You're mentioning Tyler Boyd on DraftKings is one of your favorite plays. He's the 20th most expensive wide receiver there. On FanDuel, he's 31st. You have to play him. And it's the same with Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald's probably even a better play this week. And he's 28th. In, in terms of price, I don't understand every single week and he's super safe for uh, for cash games as well. There's no chance I'm leaving Fitzgerald or Boyd out of my lineup on Fandle. Yeah, they're both awesome plays like Tyler Boyd was actually one of my top three wide receiver plays, too. So I'm I'm right in sync with Ian on this one. The, the other wide receiver that I'm really excited about this week is tags. You already mentioned Cincinnati's missing two starting cornerbacks. So DJ Chark, it's going to be a party for Chark. DJ Chark. Doo, doo. I'm sorry. I have a two year old. <laughs> I am a two-year-old. Uh, yeah, DJ Chark is a phenomenal play. Uh, bounce back. Like people are going to be worried about blowout, and and you 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 should be to an extent, but they're still going to throw the ball twenty-five times. Like that's going to happen. And how are they going to get to the blowout? They're going to score points. It's not like Leonard Fournette's going to go for four hundred yards. Yeah. Hopefully Gardner Minshew uh, gets over the groin thing and stops having uh, makeout parties. Um, and you know <laughs> during during the football season, he needs to calm down. But yeah, DJ Chark is is a good play. I mean, my question is like, would you guys rather? go to like would you rather play Chark or Hilton if you're choosing between one I would go at Hilton just because I, I feel like the game script is going to play into his favor quite heavily um, whereas DJ Chark my only concern that's my only concern is that the game script is that Leonard Fournette absolutely trashes the Bengals and they just they throw the ball 20 times on DraftKings for me it's Hilton on FanDuel it's Chark yeah I would still go Hilton and they're both just awesome plays, honestly. But I, I'm a little less concerned about the blowout factor when we have someone like Chark, who's like the clear cut number one receiver in his offense. And that could be even more true than usual if uh, D.D. Westbrook's out. He popped up uh, on the injury report today with his shoulder injury. So it's not like Chris Conley's going to steal targets. <laughs> no, unfortunately not. All right. I got one more that I, I want to mention. And I'm really I'm, I'm curious if you guys are going to laugh at me about it, but I'm, I'm I have conviction. Uh, Robert Woods. I think Robert Woods at 5,900 is in play. Uh, I know he only had four targets last week, but I, I, I really do believe that we need to absolutely just forget last week happened with the Rams. And not, Jared Goff has sucked. Don't get me wrong. Uh, he's been bad since. doesn't matter if he throws 45 passes, though. And like going into Atlanta, Atlanta is, dude, they're brutal. Like they're, they allow, this is like a get right game for the passing game. Like this is the chance for the Rams to say, all right, let's get back on track. This is like a, a potential five touchdown game for Jared Goff. Like that's how high the upside is in this game. And knowing that Desmond Trufant has been bad and he's hurt, he's not practicing. Uh, so he's probably going to be out. It's like, they're shorthanded. They were bad. And then they're only getting worse. Like they're not getting any better. So I like Brandon cooks too, but I think that Robert Woods is probably the safer one in cash. Right. Cause Brandon cooks has more than three receptions in just two games this season. If you're playing one of them and our model loves both of them for me, it's Robert Woods. How do you feel Ian? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely here for the Rams bounce back spot. I mean, it's funny, like, you know, the Falcons have had this 
they just allow nonstop receptions to running backs every year. And this year, the the trend's gone away a little bit. They haven't faced a ton of receiving our running backs so far, which is part of it. But the other part of it is they just can't stop anyone. So teams can, you know, throw their wide receivers deep. They can do whatever they want against the Falcons. And uh, this is definitely a get right spot. I do like a guy on the other side of the ball, potentially in cash uh, in that game on FanDuel, particularly Calvin Ridley. At 5,500, what is he? He's, Zach Pascal is the same price as Calvin freaking Ridley. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, that's just ridiculous to me. I mean, it hasn't been the most consistent year for Ridley, but in a spot where it looks like both offenses are going to be able to score, I'm expecting Jalen Ramsey to be following Julio Jones. I don't know why else you'd go get one of the league's best cornerbacks if you don't plan on matching him up uh, against the best wide receiver. And that's also what we saw. Wade Phillips do with Marcus Peters when Tlaib hit IR last season as well. So uh, really excited to see what Ridley can do against, uh, you know, Troy Hill. And we've seen this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've seen this Falcons team. Like they can't run the ball. They get behind in games and they need to pass. So I like Ridley a lot. Um, the last guy I would mention more of a cheap play. Dante Pettis, uh, 4,100 on DraftKings, 5,100 on FanDuel. A couple things working in his favor. Uh, Debo Samuel's got a groin injury. He's looking very questionable. And also, like, we're finally just seeing regular starter usage out of Pettis. It inexplicably wasn't there the first three weeks of the season. But since their bye, he's had 63% snaps, 72% snaps last week. Season high six targets last week. Just missed a touchdown. And again, this is not a matchup against the Redskins that we need to fear. I was talking about it with Breda earlier, particularly in the passing game. I mean, only the Falcons, Giants, Bucks, and the Eagles have a lot more uh, points per reception per game to the wide receiver position. Uh, you know, if anyone still fears Josh Norman these days, like don't anymore, uh, especially, especially, you know, with him not moving to the slot and Sh- Shannon moves their corner, uh, moves their wide receivers around so much. So a little bit of a, you, you know, I mentioned before about blowout game script. The only thing that kind of concerns me with Pettis is when you do have these games that could blow out and it's not, it's a player that, you know, isn't, like a, like a George Kittle or the running backs, they're going to get their production and a blowout. Pettis isn't necessarily that guy, so I get it if you don't want him for cash. But at that price, you know, sign me up. Yeah, at the price, I mean, Dante Pettis makes a lot of sense. I don't know if I love him for cash games. I'm probably going to be th- going with three mid-range plays, as we talked about, uh, just because there's some really good options there, and you don't need to spend up on that, any wide receiver. But Tags, if you are spending up on a wide receiver, it's got to be Cooper Cup, right? I don't know. I don't almost I almost don't want to do it because the Rams can go in a lot of different directions in that game. And I mean, Cup should be a good play, but he's priced up as such. That's my issue with it. I just don't I don't think it's a week that you have to go up wide wide receiver. Yeah. Michael Thomas at Chicago, Keenan Allen at Tennessee, DeAndre Hopkins at Indianapolis. Yeah, I like Keenan Allen. Um, And I, I want to talk about like I do like Hopkins, but he's not they haven't priced him down enough. But I want to talk about this Julio situation for a minute. Now, granted, I'm not paying, I'm not playing Julio in cash, but I do want to talk about it because Jalen Ramsey will will have been with the team for, you know, I assume that he got there like, and he's practicing with the team today. My guess, that's my guess. Right. And it's like Troy Hill is coming on the field. Do you guys remember uh, Calvin Ridley's breakout week last year against the saints? It was because Marshawn Lattimore was shadowing Julio Jones. And then like Calvin Ridley absolutely obliterated the rest of the secondary and then they decided to bracket Julio and then move Lattimore <laughs> over to Ridley and it's like that's a situation that could happen so I do like Ridley because I if he's shadowing anybody it's going to be Julio but I don't know if, if that requires too much communication between a secondary because like think about it he, he's never played alongside Nicole Roby Coleman he's never played alongside Josh Hill their safeties are trash they just lost Josh Johnson for the year like there are so many things going on with the secondary that it's like it's essentially a brand new cornerback unit and if they don't have that communication as to it let's say that Ridley moves over to one side of the field and he lines up in the slot and they put him in motion it's like wait you got this guy you got this guy and I think it could get a little distracting so I don't know I, I really don't know because with with Ramsey, he should shadow Julio. I would personally, but I don't know the intricacies of what it would mean to the rest of the defense, though. No, it's a fair point. Like I'm not, sh- I, I'm not sure which one's easier. Would it be telling Ramsey, "Hey, wherever Julio goes, you go, and we'll figure out the rest," or is it, "Hey, you stick to the left side of the field the whole game"? Like I, I really don't know which one of those would be easier. Guys, there's so many wide receivers that I like this week, Na- namely the four that we mentioned. You know, one of them was Larry Fitzgerald, the other Tyler Boyd, um, DJ Chark is somebody that I love this week, Calvin Ridley that I'm very likely for the first time this season going to use a wide receiver in the flex. I almost always go running back here. Is that something you guys are considering this week as well? I'm probably leaning the more we talk about it. I kind of like the, especially on DraftKings, the carry on Jacobs, Fournette, Trio. But uh, there's de- there's definitely plenty of good options. I mean, I agree with you, all those guys. I, f- I didn't talk about fits really, but just 
this matchup against the Giants who have not been able to guard slot wide receivers all season and fits five catches every game. Uh, he's in a smash spot as well. I can't pass up get like 20 guaranteed touches from some of these running backs. That's fine. Yeah, I get that. I mean, I understand the thought process I do because it feels like a lot of these receivers are safe. But then it's like, I, I feel like every time I pay up for wide receivers, they always just let me down. I'm like, damn it. This is why I, I never <laughs> should do it. It's the most volatile position in terms of like projecting tight ends and wide receivers. It's a lot harder to do that than it is running backs. And we had, when we had Joel Hook on the show, he talked about it. And he's like basically saying in terms of opportunity, like the guys like Christian McCaffrey, he's like, those guys should be priced over 10,000 on DraftKings, but they're not. So we have to continue to exploit it. And that's why it's like, I'm jamming in Fournette. I'm jamming in uh, Dalvin Cook this week. Now I've got one other wide receiver that might be my lock of the week, depending on what happens in Green Bay. Because we've got Devontae Adams, who I think is doubtful for this game. Marcus Valdez-Scantling is questionable. Geronimo Allison is questionable. And then you've got Aaron Rodgers, who is just foaming at the mouth for Alan Lazard. Did you see the post-game interview where he was talking about how much he's been like begging for this guy to get on the field? And well, it finally happened. And of course he did great because he's a great football player. Like, you know, taking a shot at Matt LaFleur. He really loves Alan Lazard. And if he's the number one wide receiver this week with all three of those guys out, minimum price on FanDuel, minimum price on DraftKings, how can we leave him out of our lineups? It's, it's a good <laughs> point, man. I... Oh, man. It's just, <laughs> there's just so much uncertainty here. And I know Rodgers loves the guy, but honestly, the guy in Green Bay I'm looking at, which makes me want to throw up, but Jimmy Graham, <laughs> I think. Yeah, I know. Yes, I know. <laughs> Didn't he miss practice too? I think he's, I think he's dead again. Like, yeah, he mi- Yeah, he's, he's been missing some early week practices. I'm not sure which ones are serious and which ones aren't. I was, I was ragging on him this week and Bobby just told me, he's like, you don't want Jimmy Graham. I'm like, seriously, like that dude looks toast. Like he out there, like he looks like like he looks worse than Gronk did last year and Gronk looks so clunky but Graham (laughs) the only thing that guy can do now is like he could be a red zone threat for sure um but outside of that it's like so you're looking for a touchdown with him but man I I I don't want I don't want to touch the Packers this week basically and that's weird for me to say because like I mean I understand but at three thousand dollars you wouldn't take Aaron Rodgers number one against a pass funnel defense we don't know if he's gonna be a number one I mean I I, sure okay that's fair that's fair yeah yeah that's that's the only problem I I I don't hate on I'm not trying to hate on Lazard too much but like we also wasn't Rodgers hyping up Jay Kumaro like during the preseason too he was and Geronimo Allison (laughs) he always he's always hyped up Geronimo (laughs) Allison yeah All right, guys, we're going to head on over to tight end and quarterback here in just a moment. But first, I want to tell you about Pristine Auction. First of all, we've got a giveaway going on right now through Pristine Auction where we are giving away a signed Julian Edelman Patriots helmet. This bad boy is going to go home to one of our lucky listeners. And here's how you enter the contest. All you have to do is leave an honest review on iTunes or Stitcher and then send us a screenshot of it to contest at fantasypros.com. You can check out the details at fantasypros.com slash contest it's going to take like 30 seconds maybe a minute to enter and it's also going to enter you to all our future giveaways that we have going on this season as well and if you haven't checked out pristine auction you guys have to get around to it you guys are going to love it first of all sign up at pristine auction enter the registration code of fantasy pros that's going to get you five dollars off it's free to sign up don't worry about it but enter that registration code fantasy pros that way they know we're sending people their way that way we can keep doing these giveaways like the julian edelman one we have going on right now i just bought myself a sign justice hill ravens helmet and guys i got it for under 50 bucks if you can believe it because he's not playing right now he's going to eventually and he's great so i got myself an ab absolute steal there. There are always great values to be found on Pristine Auction, and everything's guaranteed authentic from one of the most trusted sources. Check out what they have for you, no matter who your team is, your favorite players. I'm certain you're going to be able to find something you love here, Cave. It's pristineauction.com, P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, auction.com. Okay, guys, let's move on over to the, uh, we'll go tight end position first. Uh, You said you want to spend up, Ian. I'm not sure. Is it on Hunter Henry or Evan Ingram? Or maybe Kittle? Not bad. And real quick, just Graham. Graham could not be more of a GPP play. I want to make that clear. <laughs> and, and it's mostly just because on DraftKings, I think all these guys at 4,000 or higher, like you can make a case for them, except pretty much Jimmy Graham. So uh, we were talking earlier about, you know, just pass catchers in general, kind of having these uh, wider range of potential outcomes and running backs. And I do think as you could get a potential leg up on a tournament if Graham happens to fall into the end zone once or twice and some of these more expensive tight ends uh, don't come through. I'm looking at Hunter Henry. I mean, we just ha- didn't see the price adjustment after last week in the primetime game. And he really looked 100% out there. I mean, they, they were talking about him being limited, but snaps weren't, targets weren't, and the performance wasn't. So, I mean, not an incredible matchup against the Titans. I think Kevin Biard's one of the better safeties in the league. But, I mean, I don't disagree with people that, I mean, obviously defenses matter, but are 
ability to uh, find out how much they matter is kind of like what comes into question. And at the tight end position, that, that couldn't be more true. I mean, we've seen like Austin Hooper, Darren Waller go off against the Vikings this year, even though Harrison Smith's great. And I think that's kind of a similar thing here at Tennessee where uh, focus more on the targets, focus more on the talent. And Hunter Henry has both. Dex, did he actually break his knee or did they just flat out lie to us? <laughs> I mean, if he if he did, like, like what the hell is happening? Like people coming back from Achilles, people coming back from broken kneecaps in like a couple weeks. Uh, man, I, I'm not strong enough. I don't consider myself a man anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's where I'm at. Uh, but Hunter Henry, like a good play. I, I think his price would probably be like if that game had happened, he'd probably be priced right around 4,800, I would assume. Uh, so you're getting a slight discount with him. Uh, but the player that they continually underprice is Mark Andrews at 4,900, like in a game that the, they're projecting like over 50 points to be scored. I, I think they've lowered the total on that game, but still Marquise Brown's probably not going to play. They have their bye week coming next week. I just feel like this is a game like every single time that Lamar Jackson drops back to pass, he wants to throw the ball to Mark Andrews. I'm done doubting this guy. Like he continues to get it done week in week out at 4,900. It just feels like he's like, he's a guy that is, should be probably around 55 to six grand, but they just never are putting him over 5,000. I mean, he's a great price on DraftKings. to get it 4,900. I'd rather go down to 4,000 for Hunter Henry, even Austin Hooper at 5,300 against the Rams. I mean, they're implied for 26 points. Uh, the Rams, it's not like they've been great against tight ends. And so if they're going to score all those points, I wouldn't mind getting a guy who's getting eight, nine targets every game. Um, but over on FanDuel, guys, I have so much money to spend because, you know, Cook and Fournette, I've got them in my lineup. Fitzgerald, Chark, Boyd, Ridley, I already mentioned how cheap those guys are. I have enough money to go up and get George Kittle, and he's the best tight end this week going up against Washington with how many targets he gets, his upside as well. I've got the money. I'm spending it. Here's my one concern with Kittle. He had this groin injury. He did not look, I mean, he had that wild run after catch last week. He looked fine against the Rams. I'm just a little concerned. Like last week was a big time divisional matchup against the Rams. This week is a potential, if not likely, blowout against the Redskins. If there's one of these guys that could kind of be in the limited snap range, I could see it being Kittle. And if we're going to go up there, like he missed practice on Wednesday with the groin issue. Yeah, and again, I mean, he, he can play through it. We saw that. But if we're in a game where he maybe doesn't have to play through it as much, that that could be the case. If we want to go down a little bit to Evan Ingram, uh, I don't hate that. I mean, I, I, you know, we, we all know how bad the Cardinals have been against tight ends. I know they made a shift at safety a few weeks ago, but Austin Hooper kind of showed last week that still not really something that's going to stop some guys from going off. And Ingram's just – like he's truly the number one wide receiver. Uh, you know, he's the number one pass catcher in that Giants offense, even with, even with Golden Tate there and even if Sterling Shepard comes back. So maybe it becomes a little more run heavy with Saquon, but Ingram's still pacing the position with targets per game. He's truly just really, really good. I mean, as is Kittle, nothing against him. But uh, if I'm going to pay up for one of these tight ends, uh, Hooper's gotten it. But I just like Hooper and Gerald Everett, some of these other guys, even like Jimmy Graham, I, I guess maybe some of the other guys are healthy. But not all these tight ends are their offense's number one priority in the pass game. Evan Ingram usually is, and George Kittle definitely is. That's how I feel about Mark Andrews like that's the only reason I want to go to him because like Ingram I I would actually be playing Evan Ingram if I knew he was 100% healthy but he's he was he's coming off a a sprained MCL like that's that's not an injury that you want to rush back from and I'm I I know he's been practicing and I know he wants to play and all that stuff but the chance of re-injury is enough for and you're paying for him like if he busts it's gonna really really hurt your lineup so like that's why I say Andrews down at 4900 I'm I'm not opposed to Hooper but he's he's been great right but it's like you know Are we going to be surprised if he has a game for three catches, 40 yards and Julio and Ridley go off? No. Uh, So it's like, I'm going to take the number one pass catcher in a game that Baltimore is going to have to throw a little bit. All right, guys, let's go to the quarterback position. I don't know about you guys, but I'm playing the guy who's the RB one on his team and also passes the ball (laughs) 35 times. What are you doing, Ian? Yeah, I like that call. Both these scramblers. I think, I think Lamar Jackson and Kyler Murray can be your uh, quarterbacks on, on either way. I'm leaning right now. I have Lamar on DraftKings and Kyler on FanDuel. Uh, can't say enough good things about Kyler in this spot, though. I, I do an article every week called the Mismatch Manifesto. I basically just I combine offensive rates with defensive rates. We do this anyway. You know, uh, t- this offense averages – you know, the third most yards per attempt they're facing defense that allows the 29th or allows the fifth most or whatever. So just combine that, get a one-way metric for it. And this week, Kyler has the single best combined explosive pass play rate. He's in the fastest pace matchup and he's not going to be under much, much pressure. So we, we knew he was throwing the ball. I mean, he threw the ball actually pretty well in some not ideal matchups to start the season. And the, the big shift the last few weeks has been the rushing usage, which we, which we were all calling out for after the first two weeks. And now he's had eight carries, four carries, 10 carries, 11 
nine carries over the last four weeks. And a lot of them have been by design. I mean, these aren't really fluky scrambles. Like they are doing a really good job of getting him loose in the space. And, you know, I mentioned this before with Larry Fitzgerald, um, but the Giants cannot cover slot receivers. They have allowed the second most points per reception per game, two wide receivers lined up in the slot uh, per Sports Info Solutions. And when Murray and this whole offense is really trying to go through their slot receivers as much as possible, hopefully Christian Kirk can get back this week, uh, really bodes well for him all the way around. Tags for me, it's definitely Lamar Jackson or Kyler Murray. I'm going Jackson because I have the money, but I mean, you just look at what Lamar Jackson's doing. He had 19 carries last week for 152 yards, 14 for 70 the week before, 9 for 66, 16 for 120, 8 for 46, and he's getting rushing touchdowns as well. I mean, that that's a free two touchdowns, two passing touchdowns. <laughs> I mean, they're making you pay for it. Like, that's the issue, right? Is that can you fit? Can you get, if I get up there, I'm going to go to Deshaun Watson, I think. Really? OK. I have no issue with playing Lamar Jackson. I really don't. He's like the definition of a cash game quarterback. I think his ceiling is lowering a bit because you're seeing him as a passer struggle again uh, outside of games against the Dolphins. But like his ceiling's now 21 fantasy points. Like that's that's the <laughs> worst he's seen all season. Right. Deshaun Watson's been at 13 and 12. Yeah. I, I mean, I know what you're talking about, but. I, it's just, can I fit him in? That's basically what it comes down to. And are you going to pay 6,800 for Lamar Jackson? I don't know if I can fit him in if I'm paying for the the high price running backs that I'm doing. So I might, I mean, save money and go down to maybe a Matt Ryan. Like I know that we, we look for mobile quarterbacks, uh, but he's underpriced this week at 6,300. Jared Goff's underpriced at 6,200. I think they're both probably better tournament options. So I've actually gone down to look at maybe Jacoby Brissett at 5,600. He offers a little bit of mobility. But no, it, it, everybody's projecting a shootout in this one. Like, uh, I think the consensus QB one on the week is Deshaun Watson. So it's like knowing that Houston's their the run defense has been, I think, the strength under Bill O'Brien there. They've had to move the ball through the, the air. And we've seen Frank Reich's offense last year. Andrew Luck did phenomenal against this Houston team. And I know that Jacoby Brissett's not Andrew Luck, but he's putting up fantasy numbers. He was the QB 12 in fantasy going into their bye week. So he's continually done it. So the floor should be solid if you want to save some money at 5,600. Ian, if you're going down and saving some money, would you go get Jacoby Brissett? Maybe Gardner Minshew, who's been great this season, except for last week. And now he gets by far his easiest matchup. Or would you go all the way down and spend $4,800 on Ryan Tannehill. Oh man, I'm not quite feeling Tanner thrill this week. Me either. Okay, I'm just making sure. I think some people are going to consider it. That's why I want to bring it up. I like what you said about Gardner Minshew, though. I have him more down as a GPP play, but maybe, maybe after a couple drinks, I could put him in the cash game. We'll see. <laughs> That's not a good idea. Don't <laughs> but, build your cash games after a couple drinks, man. But uh, no, I mean, we talked about the cornerbacks being out. And yeah, he had the rough game last week, but that Saints defense pretty is pretty underrated, particularly the pass rush. Before that, I mean, we saw him rip off QB 15, QB 15. 15, QB 16, QB 13, and QB 8 performances. So he's had a pretty decent floor. I don't think he's going to tank your lineup in this spot. Against good defenses. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I do really think he is uh, the real deal for the most part. I mean, I don't think he's some flash in the pan. He is making uh, good throws, and he's got a good matchup here. I mean, the Bengals, even with their starting cornerbacks, have allowed the seventh most uh, fantasy points per game to the quarterbacks. And just looking, especially on DraftKings, I mean, if you just look at the quarterbacks under 6K after Jimmy Garoppolo, I think we can easily point to the Bengals. Bengals defense is being the worst of the group. So, uh, yeah, that, that's my take with uh, Minshew. And you can fire him up with, uh, you know, Chark as his uh, stacking buddy. I'll mention one other quarterback that I think is a decent play. Um, Josh Allen, just because he goes up against Miami and because, you know, Josh Allen gets a, a lot of yards on the ground as well. Uh, he's he's stupid safe. But I just think there's better options this week, namely Lamar Jackson and Kyler Murray. All right, before we keep rolling, I want to tell you about one of the other sponsors of today's show. It's Hooters. And now they added Monday Night Moneyball, which is going to add an element of excitement to watching football on Mondays. The Monday Night Moneyball game is so easy. It works just like making prop bets. Just answer a few quick questions about the Monday Night game, and you're going to have a chance at cash prizes, free Hooters food, and even a trip to the big game come February. Get in on all the action at HootersMoneyball.com, and there's two ways to play. You can play at Hooters. Or you can play anywhere else. If you play at Hooters, it's on Mondays only. You've got a chance to win cash prizes, a trip to the big game, and Hooters food and drink prizes. If you play anywhere, you can do it anytime you want, and you can compete for a shot for Hooters food and drink prizes. And remember, Hooters provides the optimal football viewing experience, all the big games on all the screens, so you don't miss a single moment, and Hooters girls make it a fun and festive atmosphere, so you're not sitting around in a basement with a bunch of dudes. Their world-famous wings and selection of ice-cold beer turn it into the ultimate tailgate. Again, that's HootersMoneyBall.com. Guys, let's go to DST. And um, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm sick of getting beat by these guys who play against Miami every single week. And they're like, 
oh, sure, I'll spend $5,500 on a defense. And then they go for 30 points, and it's like, well, that's the difference in cash games, and I wasn't stupid enough to use them. Now I am. I'm stupid enough to use the Buffalo Bills against Miami. (laughs) Now I'm stupid enough to use them. (laughs) Man, I don't disagree with you. The the Bills are so freaking good, too, on defense. I mean, even coming into this year, we knew that was the one strong spot of their team. But I'm just – I'm still going to be one of these fish that just wants to pay down a defense. And (laughs) – Look, we've seen it happen. I mean, last week we had the Jets kind of sticking out as a defense that really wasn't bad. That maybe wasn't the best matchup, but they were home and had some things going for them. And I think it's the Colts this week. I mean, I don't disagree that Deshaun Watson's in a really good spot. But the thing with Watson, and I I know it's died off a little bit with the last two weeks, but he's still a quarterback that we should feel okay about firing up defenses against just because of the sacks he takes. Because he holds the ball so long, which... It, people were making that out to be such a negative thing after he took like six sacks one week, but the dude's Superman. Like he should hold the ball long because every other time he does it, he makes some incredible play that no one else on the planet can make. So it's just kind of nature of the way he plays. It does end up working out pretty well for the fantasy defenses. And I, I truly do believe the Colts are a solid defense. I mean, we just saw them shut down the chiefs and arrowhead. I mean, and now they're getting Darius Leonard back uh, off the bye week. Uh, so having him again, you know, mentioned Mosley earlier. I think Leonard also, qualifies as one of the true kind of difference making off ball linebackers uh Pierre Desir has kind of had Hopkins numbers I know he's a little banged up um but yeah just just some good things to like from this Colts D you know it's really funny because I I did that whole spiel on the Buffalo Bills and yes I actually am using them on FanDuel I'm not joking around on DraftKings though our model's telling us the Indianapolis Colts are the best play and I would agree with you at two thousand dollars yeah come on Yep. Yep. The DraftKings is starting to make you like, like question, like, do I just pay down a defense? Cause like they're making teams like 1500. I don't even think that the, I can't bring myself to ever play the dolphins, but at 1500 <laughs> against uh, Josh Allen and the bills, I mean, it's not the worst play in the world, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I actually, we talked about it on the, the streaming show, the, uh, that the Colts were a decent option. They're going to allow some points. They need four fantasy points to hit value tags. Do they get it? I I'd say 80% chance. No. <laughs> Yeah, the Dolphins. Yeah, probably not. I don't know, but uh, it just allows you to do some crazy things with your lineup. But yeah, I'm I'm down with the Colts and Cash for sure. The one thing with the Dolphins, I mean, Josh Allen is so fun to watch because, like, when he's on, he's making these wild throws that because like he literally makes you defend every square inch of the field because he can run and he can just throw the ball a freaking mile. But he has two just atrocious plays every single game that usually result in turnovers. So if one of those happens, you know, go back for six. Uh, definitely could help. I would feel better about the Dolphins if like their only good defensive player, Xavier Howard, was healthy. So that's yes, <laughs> that's a small negative there. All right. Any other defenses you want to talk about for cash games? Are you ready to circle back around and go GPP tags? Uh, ready to go GPP. All right. Let's go GPP for defense special teams then. Is there one that stands out to you, Ian? I'm looking at the Cardinals a little bit. They're getting Patrick Peterson back this week. They're also uh, pretty cheap on DraftKings coming at 2400 And we've seen Daniel Jones. I mean, he's had the highest pressure rate in the league this season when he's been under center. Um, hasn't really – he's come in and he's thrown the ball downfield a lot, which – We've appreciated after watching Eli, but hasn't been very accurate with it. I think um, he's only completed like three of 20 uh, passes, done 20 plus uh, yards downfield or something like that. Saquon being back obviously is bad news for the Cardinals. So in, in such a fast paced game, maybe not quite the defense uh, you should be you know looking at in cash. But, you know, it could be a high scoring game. And we do see with uh, defenses like not every defense is going to hold their opponent to under 10 points. So if we aren't going to be able to kind of have that as an option we should at least be looking for defenses against rookie quarterbacks or against different quarterbacks that are prone to making mistakes and I do think Daniel Jones is one of those guys so tags it's a real shame that we can't have Baker Mayfield or Jameis Winston they're both on buys this week 11 and 10 interceptions do you know who's third in the NFL in interceptions it is Matt Ryan yeah I mean he's on pace for 700 pass attempts that's what I'm trying to say is this is going to be a shootout The Falcons are going to put up 30 points, but if the Rams pick off two or three passes, get a couple sacks, maybe force a fumble because Matt Ryan's dropping back 45, 50 times, then they're going to hit value. And I don't think anybody's going to play the Rams. If they take one back to the house at 0.3% ownership, I'm in the money. Well, that's what you need. You need to pick six, basically, is what that comes down to. So, I mean, that that's definitely a tournament play. I would say that the Seahawks are probably one of my favorite tournament plays. Uh, Lamar Jackson, when he's forced to throw, he has not looked very good. Uh, and this game is in Seattle. Uh, Seattle is the favorite here. There, there's a lot of reasons that I think that you could like look at things that correlate and then look at the ownership. Like the projected ownership for the Seahawks is going to be practically nothing. So uh, 2,800, I'm okay with them in tournaments. 
You know, I don't think, I don't know if you realize this, Tags, but every single week, this is the seventh week in a row we've done this show, where when we went to GPP DST, we went against Lamar Jackson because it's just possible, right? He's not a very good passer. That's what you're looking for. I mean, you, you need the, the game script to go that way. And I mean, Russell Wilson's the MVP right now. They should be leading that game. All right, let's go tight end DST again. I would not recommend getting cute because there's only a couple good options and they're also the good options for GPP. Would you disagree with that, Ian? Or do you have, or, or who, do you, who are you recommending for GPP? I heard someone say earlier about the, the potential sneaky cheap play, Luke Wilson, which I don't disagree with. I'm just a little worried because, and I, I didn't do, I didn't deep dive into every single game, but I mean, we have a long history of Wilson being in Seattle. And e- even when he has been, playing pretty consistent snaps. He's never really been a guy Russ has thrown to. I, so I'm, I'm not so sure we can necessarily assume he's going to see Will Disley's target share. I think for whatever reason, you know, R- Russ and his Bible study friend, Will Disley, you know, just uh, feeding him all the targets. I'm not sure Wilson's going to get it. I, I keep going back to Jimmy Graham guys, and I, I kind of hate myself for it. But look, he, he is slow. He's not looking great. But with that said, they need wide receivers. And Jimmy Graham has played 53% snaps in the slaughter out wide this season already. Uh, he was banged up more earlier in the season. Again, hopefully we get some more news on what this uh, – kind of new thing is I feel like it's just more rest than anything but hopefully after Thursday report we'll get some more uh, info on that but he's been playing at least 70% of the offensive snaps last few weeks averaging 5.7 targets per game and again it's just a leverage play on the top tight ends more than anything because you know Kittle, Ingram, Hooper, Andrews, uh, Darren Waller, Hunter Henry we can make cases for all those guys Jimmy Graham's gonna be the one guy that I think people are gonna just ignore because who wants to play Jimmy Graham and against the Raiders defense that we have no reason to fear that secondary he could score two touchdowns yeah i'm i mean you're talking me into a little bit more i wish he was cheaper but but that's going to be part of the appeal though right is that nobody's going to own him because of that price so i kind of like it i mean again he's a guy that can score two touchdowns and that's basically what you're looking for another one i would mention uh dawson knox Dawson Knox is like, he's one of the full-time tight ends in the league. He's running more routes than, uh, over the, I think over the last three weeks, he ranks sixth among tight ends. Well, the last three games he's played, uh, he ranks sixth among tight ends, I, I want to say, in, in routes run. So he's out there. The Dolphins are terrible. 3,300. I don't, I don't mind him. I'll mention Gerald Everett. I mean, I understand wanting, you know, Brandon Cooks, Robert Woods, Cup, but they're, they have more design plays for Gerald Everett than any of those guys. They're trying to get him the ball. Eight targets, 11 targets, five targets last week against San Francisco in that throwaway game. Uh, but I think there's a chance he catches six, seven balls for 80 plus yards and scores a touchdown or two. There's a chance in this high, high scoring, fast up tempo game. The one thing I would caution with with Dawson Knox is I noticed this yesterday. Tyler Croft coming off the bye was a full practice with his foot thing. We haven't seen him yet this year, but they did pay him a decent chunk of money. I would hope that they let Dawson keep playing. You know, they drafted him in the third round. He has looked really good uh, pretty much in all facets of the game. So. Again, we're talking GPP plays, so you can kind of take that risk, especially with the price discount. But uh, would just keep an eye on Croft uh, before completely overloading your exposure. All right, guys, let's go to the wide receiver position. Tags, do you have two or three names that you're fond of? Uh, Brandon Cooks. He's going to go bananas. Like I'm playing, I'm going to play. I'm going to have too much exposure to Brandon Cooks this week. I, I really am. Uh, Isaiah Oliver is not good, and that's that's where Cooks lines up the majority of the time. Uh, and they might be without Desmond Trufant. Uh, again, Goff needs to get the ball down the field. Uh, Atlanta is the team to do that against. By the way, I'm just going to get out of the way now, Bobby, so you don't have to ask me when it comes around. Uh, my favorite stack of the week is Jared Goff, Brandon Cooks, and Robert Woods. Uh, and then you can come back and play somebody on the Falcons that you like, maybe Ridley, because like the Falcons in the 19 games since the start of last year without Keanu Neal, they've allowed at least 18 and a half fantasy points to uh, it is 15 of 19 quarterbacks. Like, that's stupid. Like, it, it basically it says, Dan Quinn, I want to be fired. And um, if you go and look in Atlanta, there's always fantasy points scored in that building. It's, there's no reason to avoid this game. Uh, I love Brandon Cook so much, and someone needs to seriously check on me on Sunday if he doesn't do well. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else you want to throw in their tags before we go to Ian? Oh, you can go to Ian, man. All right, Ian, who do you have? Yeah, so two guys I like as more kind of boom and bust options. First one's Darius Slayton on a draft. And this is a little bit assuming that Sterling Shepard, who, I, I mean, come on, guys had two concussions this year. Let's let's give him another week of rest, please. But if Sterling Shepard's active, it complicates things a little bit. But Slayton's pretty cheap. He's shown this rookie chemistry, you know, with, with Danny Dimes. And uh, Jones has been throwing a deep to him. I mean, last week, 
the difference in Slayton's, I mean, Slayton had an extra 124 air yards compared to receiving yards. So he really could have had a big game, just didn't really come down with it. And the only guy this year averaging more air yards per target is Devontae Parker. So if we're going GPP guys, you know, we want people that can potentially, you know, have that blow up game and catch a couple long touchdowns, you know, in a best case scenario. And Slayton has that in his potential range of outcomes. Uh, the other guy that, you know, we talked about a little bit before, but DK Metcalf, Really setting up well in this spot because I do th- I do think uh, Marlon Humphrey is going to be in the slot against Tyler Lockett. He's taken Tyler Boyd and Juju Smith Schuster over the last two weeks, so he is one of these very few shadow cornerbacks that will move inside. And that leaves Metcalf against Brandon Carr against Marcus Peters. Like, so yeah, sign me up for that. Uh, sounds good there. And uh, the great thing with Metcalf is. All, I mean, he leads the league in yards per reception right now because half his targets are pretty much deep balls, and the other half seem to be coming in the red zone. I mean, they're really giving him uh, one of the most fancy-friendly target shares in the league. He's still priced under 5K on DraftKings, so you're not having to spend up too much. And he's just kind of one of these perfect GPP targets where you know you have that boom week firmly in the possibilities. You know, I'm glad you brought up Slayton. He was someone I was going to bring up as well. His profile kind of reminds me of Michael Gallup, how last year he was just getting so many air yards that it seemed inevitable that he was going to blow up, and he eventually did. So I think it's going to happen with Slayton if Sterling Shepard's out. Now, I've got a couple of names here. Uh, we talked about Alan Lazard. What about his teammate, Jake Kumaro? If he's if he's also starting, I think that there's a chance he goes off, and he's extremely cheap. Um, an- another name that I want to mention is the guy who's leading the NFL in air yards over the past two weeks. Anyone know who that is? Mm, is it Mike Williams? It's Mike Williams. He's banged up right now. Bad matchup. I don't care though. If he has a bad matchup and he's getting 150, 170 air yards, getting balls thrown to him in the red zone and nobody's playing him. I'll take all the shares, baby. That's the crazy part, Bobby, is I was actually looking at Mike Williams. I wanted to say him as a tournament play at 4,600. He makes tons of sense. He's seen double digit targets in the last two weeks. But uh, the thing is like, we haven't projected for 13% ownership right now. I know that can change, but that's high um, for a tournament. Uh, So I would actually go down to 4,100 and play the guy Ian talked about earlier in Dante Pettis. What about Anthony Miller going up in the slot against the New Orleans Saints? That's a, that's a sneaky play, but he hasn't seen enough targets to justify playing him though. I'm also not convinced that Patrick Robinson is even worse than PJ Williams, to be honest with you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I said the same thing. I was like, this might be a good thing for the Saints. But at the same time, I talked to some people that cover the Saints and they were saying that Robinson was legit terrible. This this like through training camp, they said that he did not even come close to earning that job. And even even after PJ Williams really struggled to start the year, they never went to Robinson. So I, I really do think they're down on him. Fair. I, uh, I would look at 45. So. Auden Tate, guys, I don't know if you saw the catches this dude made last week, but this guy can ball, and he's been getting the targets. A.J. Green's still out. Uh, you know, a lot of the same things we said about Tyler Boyd, why he's set up so well. Also apply to Auden Tate. He's probably going to have way uh, less ownership than Boyd. And 4,500 for a full-time receiver on an offense that's probably going to be throwing the ball uh, most of the game uh, isn't too bad. All right, guys, let's go to the running back position. Tag your first this time. Uh, Devonta Freeman. He was the guy that I wanted to talk about in cash, but I can't do it. Devonta Freeman is one of my favorite plays. Like I played a lot of him last week. I kind of came around on it because like the opportunity, he might be in a timeshare. That's fine, but he plays for a high scoring offense. He's at home in a game that has an over under of almost 56 points. Uh, he's 5,400. He's so cheap and nobody wants to play him because everybody's down on him. But last week he like had like a true workhorse role. Uh, Ito Smith only saw, I think it was like three touches in that game and uh, Freeman did well. He scored two touchdowns. So Devonta Freeman at 5,400. I've actually considered him in cash. If you need to save a couple bucks. Dang. All right. Ian, who do you have at the running back position? I, I saw Freeman snap rate. Right? I was pretty surprised by it last week, too. I am seeing it seems like Ito might have been pulled a little bit early last game with some hamstring injury. I haven't really seen him pop up in the injury report, so I think he is healthy. But I mean, I keep waiting for Freeman and or Austin Hooper to just chill out because it seems like a lot of their targets are just these check downs. I don't know how sustainable that is, but you know, I, I thought maybe last week against the Cardinals would be a game that the Falcons could keep pacing and feed more of the pass game through Ridley and Julio. Didn't happen then. I don't know that we should expect that to happen against the Rams uh, either. So uh, don't necessarily hate those. Derrick Henry, I think, is a guy that we got to Every week. I mean, it just depends on the game script. It, and if Tennessee is up a touchdown or two touchdowns, we're looking at a top five running back. 
And even if they're not, like he's got an underrated floor. The snaps aren't there, but I think the snaps matter less for Henry than any other running back in the league. He is the focal point of their offense. He has 18 combined carries and targets in every game this year. Uh, Chargers have been a 10th worst defense running backs in terms of points for reception per game. You know, I'm not really afraid of their front uh, at all. So, yeah, man, he's got that blow up potential. You know, he's pretty him and Fournette are pretty similar players in that the, they get the ball a lot. It might not be the prettiest to watch, but they have those like 60 plus yard runs in their uh, potential range of outcomes. So uh, yeah, home spot with, uh, I mean, look, I'm, I, I said before, I'm not buying in on Tanner or anything, but I do think there's something to be said for, you know, when the team makes the quarterback switch, that at least kind of rallies the rest of the team to get going. We saw that with the giants a, a couple weeks ago. So uh, I could see a scenario where Henry has one of his Derrick Henry weeks. Usually I don't love a bunch of running backs for GPP. I've got several this week that I'm fond of. You mentioned Henry. I'm also going to go with uh, Aaron Jones. I don't think anyone's going to play him after he had, what, 11 carries last week against Detroit, and Jamal Williams looked like he was a starter. Uh, It's not a good matchup against Oakland, but Aaron Jones, we've seen him just absolutely eat in bad situations before. It's entirely possible. Marlon Mack, you already mentioned him earlier. It's another one like Derrick Henry. If he has the game script on his side, he's rushing the ball 25 times. And then my very favorite GPP play this week, Melvin Gordon at Tennessee. Bad matchup, but we're talking about someone who was on pace for 2,100 total yards last year before injury. Now, they've been easy and back into the offense. Offensive line isn't great, but if you're telling me there's not a chance Melvin Gordon is going for a humongous game, I think that you're wrong. And the offensive line could be helped out a lot because it sounds like uh, Russell Okung is going to be back this week. You're right. Yep, you're absolutely right. Hey, what do you guys think about playing both Frank Gore and Devin Singletary in a GPP contest? Is there a chance they both go over 100 yards like when Jeff Wilson and Raheem Mostert did? It's happened this year against the Dolphins. Uh, Pollard and Zeke did it. I don't know if I want to bet on it. I mean, you're not you're not betting on it happening. You're saying, I'll take the one in 200 chance it happens, and if it does, I'm setting myself up against, you know, three million other people in the million dollar contest, whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could think about it. <laughs> I, I do like the Marlon Mack um, potential call there. Uh, I know you talked about him for potential cash play, but I think he's a better tournament play. You know, if, if for whatever reason, like the Colts jump out in front, they're going to like carry the ball through him. Like they're going to move through him. And I, I don't want to sit here and pretend that Houston's the same defense that they were last year. Jadavian Clowney losing him. They have suffered a little bit. And Mac, it's so weird with Mac, right? Is like, we, we want to see like, we're like, Oh, he doesn't get the targets. He's running pass routes, which is the craziest thing is like, he's running more pass routes, not more than Naheem Hines, but he's running a lot more than he did last year. He's just not getting targeted. So I, I do like him in tournaments as a potentially low owned option. Uh, now that he's priced at six K, but the Derek Henry is one. I, I definitely was going to bring him up because uh, the Chargers, if Melvin Ingram is out for that game, which he didn't practice yesterday, I don't know if he's practiced today or not, but uh, Derrick Henry, like, like they're th- that defense is struggling. We saw James Conner and Benny Snell like looking like pro bowlers uh, against that team. So I, I do like Derrick Derrick Henry a lot. All right, Ian, you already mentioned Gardner Minshew against Cincinnati. Is there somebody else at the quarterback position that you think would uh, could potentially blow up this week? Oh man, I think Gardner is kind of still my pick here. He's he's that cheap guy I'm looking at. I, you know, I'm saying good things about Boyd. I'm saying good things about Tate, you know, by transit property. That would mean good things for Andy Dalton. I think people were kind of expecting the bounce back last week in that uh, smash ball against the Cardinals. And he wasn't bad. He, he ended up meeting him just about his, his salary implied total. Um, I'm sorry, that was two weeks ago. But uh, it, he, he's been better the last two weeks since that tr- that train wreck against the Steelers. So, uh, again, Jaguars defense, not a unit we need to fear. And this game, the, the pace isn't going to be very good, but sneaky kind of – it gives me like uh, poor man's Giants uh, Cardinals potential shootout this week, I feel like. You know who I like in GPP, guys? And, uh, you know, everyone really likes Deshaun Watson, Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, Matt Ryan for good reason this week, right? People are going to be on Josh Allen. I think a lot of people are going to overlook Russell Wilson. Now his ownership is still going to be 3 4%, but anytime you can get Russell Wilson at 3 or 4%, I don't care if he's playing the Bengals, I don't care if he's playing the Patriots, Russell Wilson can go nuts any week. Now it's going to take a certain game script, and I don't expect that game script to happen, but if it does happen, he can terrorize the Baltimore Ravens. He went for 41 against the Saints defense that we're talking about avoiding because they'd absolutely crush Gardner Minshew, they crushed the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, Russell Wilson destroyed them. 406 yards, four touchdowns, ran the ball seven times for 51 yards. He can go 40 points any week in any matchup. Yeah, Russ has actually been running again this year. He's had nine carries, eight carries. His one dud came against the Cardinals when everyone was finally on him. So I think that's kind of what's uh, kept people hesitant. But man, yeah, I forget which one of you guys said earlier, but he, he needs to be at the forefront of any MVP discussion right now. 
That was Tags. I think you're right, though. Tags, who do you have in, in the uh, quarterback conversation? Yeah, I mean, I talked about Jacoby Brissett earlier. I do like Kyler. I know you guys talked about him in cash. And like on, to be honest with you, a lot of times when it comes to quarterback, when it comes to cash in tournaments, I'll play a similar one. Uh, I might vary a little bit, um, not just be overweight. But, I mean, Josh Allen somebody that I would definitely con- uh, contemplate because the way he's priced at 6500 so close to Lamar Jackson, so close to Deshaun Watson, nobody's going to play him. Uh, and that's what we're showing in our projections, that he's going to be lower owned. There was a poll someone posted on Twitter uh, like yesterday or today saying who's going to score more fantasy points this week, Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes. And people were voting like they, the edge get went to Josh Allen. I'm like, well, why aren't more people playing Josh Allen in DFS then? So if we have his projected ownership under 7% uh, at 6,500, it's very possible that Frank Gore just, you know, he doesn't score touchdowns. Like we know that about him. It's possible that Devin Singletary, maybe he re-injures the hamstring. I don't know. But Josh Allen presents a, a high, a high fantasy ceiling. And I think his floor is solid enough too. So, I mean, I like Josh Allen at 6,500. That's that's a really good call, Tags. Hey, I've got one more. Jimmy Garoppolo against Washington. I know he hasn't done much this season. 11, 24, 11, 15, 13. And frankly, doesn't look that great. But Washington's defense is so horrendous. Do you think there's a chance he goes for three, four touchdowns here? No. No, no, like J- Jimmy Garoppolo is not good. Um, so basically, like he hasn't been asked to throw a lot because he's not very good. And two, that defense is playing great. And there's no reason to think that Washington's going to be able to score. And so Kyle Shanahan's not a moron. He's not going to have Jimmy Garoppolo th- drop back and throw 35 times against Washington um, if he doesn't have to. And that's that's kind of what we've seen, right? Like Jimmy Garoppolo still has an interception in uh, four of the five games that he's played. So it's like, he's, why are you going to put the ball in his hands? Like he's missing his left tackle. He's missing his right tackle, uh, missing his blocking fullback. There's just like a whole lot going on here that if you're going to go down, like he's six K too. It's not like you're saving a lot of money by playing. I have no idea what DK is thinking with that price. Yeah. I think it's a fair point with like Jimmy. This is not the spot for them to lean on him. I, I don't want to say he's not good. I just think he's more of a, some of his parts quarterback. I think he's kind of similar to Jared Goff where like, yeah, if you can protect him and give him some open receivers, like he'll hit him in rhythm, but he's definitely not one of these guys that can go create off script and just kind of put the offense on his back. Um, and then uh, I like the Josh Allen call. And if we're going to do that, the guy I think that had, everyone, was really trending towards early in the week was a uh, smoky brown and then he had this groin injury yesterday but he was out there practicing again and it's it'd be great to get some more info on that but man if there's you know a perfect gpp target to pair with them it's, it's number one receiver that also happens to be one of the league's best uh field stretchers uh I mentioned before Xavier howard is looking like he's probably going to miss uh this week as well so a lot of that bill's passing game is going straight through smoky and cole beasley so i don't hate gpp stacks that just kind of get all those guys where a lot of people probably be leaning towards the run game. So who's your stack of the week? Stacking at land on the other side as well. You could throw in a, that's the thing is you can kind of pick your poison. If you want to play Ridley, if you want to play Julio, you could do that. Uh, but yeah, stack Jared Goff, Brandon Cooks, and uh, Robert Woods. So I got a little bit of a funky one. I like, I, I talked about the Colts defense earlier. I'm going Colts D and Marlon Mack playing those percentages a little bit. And then also DeAndre Hopkins on the other side of the ball. I agree the price isn't quite down yet, which would be ideal. But this does seem like the week where Hopkins could maybe get one of those just targets in the teens type games which is the way it's setting up Colts I know they kind of changed their tendency they ran a ton of man coverage versus the Chiefs but seems really like a one-off thing because they have been the most zone heavy defense just really trying to limit big plays uh, over these last few seasons so uh, you know if you do want to imagine a perfect setup it's Marlon Mack and the Colts D doing well uh, getting up but then Hopkins just getting fed these underneath targets which that's been his game this year. It's been weird, but he's got a career low average target depth. I mean, it's been kind of around like the Michael Thomas, uh, just shorter slot receiver-esque type guys. So I, I know Desir has had some success against Hopkins, but uh, if we can get all these, again, good players in a potentially really good situation, I like it. All right, Tags, you're going to need to plug your ears for this one, man, okay? <laughs> So I'm not trying to finish like in the top 10% and get $40. I want a million dollars. I'm going contrarian. I'm going Aaron Rodgers, Jake Kumaro, Alan Lazard. Let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. If I see Rodgers going nuts this weekend, I'm just going to start laughing. Yeah, it's, it's going to happen, dude. Aaron Rodgers is a guy that has shown over the years like he doesn't. It's weird. He does not play well with wide receivers that he has no chemistry with. And I think I think we've seen that like he's had down performances when he lost Jordy Nelson in the lineup. And it's like now he, now he's without Devontae Adams. And it's like I went through his quarterback performances like he's finished outside the top 20 more often than he's finished inside the top uh, 10. So it's like 
He's also played the Bears, the Vikings, the Broncos, the Cowboys, the Lions. And now he's playing the, the very feared Raiders, Bobby. Come on. <laughs> yeah, the Raiders who are a pass funnel defense, man. Aaron Rodgers going for four touchdowns. I don't care who he's throwing to. He loves Kumaro. He loves Lazard. It's happening. I'm winning a million dollars, man. <laughs> next next week you're doing the show by yourself. Because I'm going to be eating at an ice cream buffet. I don't even know if those exist. I'm going to find one. All right, let's go lock of the week. Tags your first. Oh, it is Leonard Fournette. You plug him, you play him, hundred percent. I will have. I, I, I'm honest. I'm honest with you guys. I will not have a lineup without Leonard Fournette this week. I'm looking at Tyler Boyd, and I, you know, I talked about why earlier, and I think we really get the like Fournette's going to be at thirty or forty percent ownership as he should be, and but Boyd, he could realistically be a little bit lower. We'll see how things shape up. Uh, towards the weekend but I mean he got shut down by Marlon Humphrey last week you know we talked about uh, him being one of those truly good cornerbacks earlier so there's just too much volume here in a good spot uh, in a game that I I don't see I don't see any scenario where the Bengals really jump out to a big lead so whether it's a back and forth game or whether Jaguars really get going either those scenarios are fine for Boyd. That's funny. So I was I was trying to decide. Well, it was going to be Fournette, and then I was trying to decide if I wanted to go Boyd or DJ Chark. So uh, or Dalvin Cook. I guess I'm going to go with DJ Chark as my lock of the week at C- Cincinnati with no cornerbacks. I feel like this was a good show, guys. I feel like we 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 hit on a lot. I feel like it was solid. It was like very concentrated. I feel like it was a good show, man. Yeah, yeah it was fun. Yeah, it was great. It was uh, it was good to finally talk to you, Ian, and thank you for helping me finish top five in accuracy a couple weeks ago. <laughs> I don't know if you actually had anything to do with it, but it it could not have been coincidental. I'll take all credit for good things and then the bad things, you know, we're just variants. So <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a plan. Uh, Ian, thanks for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much, dudes. Uh, yeah. Uh, best of luck this week. You as well. And don't forget to give Ian a follow on Twitter if you don't already at I Heart it. I'm at Bobby Fantasy Pro and tags us at Mike Taglier NFL. All right. And I want to say thanks to the sponsors of today's show, Hooters, where they've got the Monday night Moneyball game now at HootersMoneyball.com. And also a pristine auction. We've got that signed helmet giveaway at FantasyPros.com slash contest. And check out pristine auction. Sign up using the registration code FantasyPros for $5 off. That's P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. And also make sure to check out FanDuel because if you're a new user, you're going to get $20 in site credit when you deposit $20. Go to FanDuel.com slash Fantasy Pros or download the FanDuel app. And also don't forget about the DFS Optimizer I told you about at the beginning of the show. It's FantasyPros.com slash Optimizer. For Ian Harditz and Mike Tagliere, I'm Bobby Sylvester. Thanks for listening and enjoy your football.